Well, listen, um, I have the, the, you know, the perfect way to start this. Are we on? We are on now, yes. Remember that line in the chorus line? Um, don't tell me Broadway's dying because I just got here. I think I'm the one that said that. It was a very exciting time to begin in New York. I thought we were wonderful and that fortune had thrown us together. We all started together. We were all going to make it. We, it was all going to happen. I remember Meryl sneaking off to second act uh, Liza and coming back and saying, wow, that woman gives everything, everything. And you hear a voice say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gwen Verton is unable to perform. The role of Roxy Hart will be played by Liza Minnelli. And you're on. You know, I found some footage from Chicago. Ah! Have you ever seen it? No! Oh, darling, please can I see them? Of course. Those were the best dance numbers on Broadway. That was the year that both Fosse and Fred and John and myself won the Oscar, the Emmy, and the Tony. <laughs> you know, I knew that I was built for the Broadway music stage as a kid growing up on Long Island. That's what I am. That's what I came here to. That's what I got off that $52 plane ride from Dallas, Texas to LaGuardia. When you grew up outside the city, you just kind of sat there looking at the TV and thinking, um, oh, I've got to go there, you know, now. <laughs> and I'm never coming back. <laughs> I was never going back. If I was going back to Texas, I was going back as a card-carrying member of the theater in New York. You know, I was born for the stage, clearly. I can tell you the moment that I went, oh my God, I am going to gear my life towards working in the Broadway musical theater. It was in 1972, and it was when I saw Pippin. Jules Fisher had created this wall of light. And all you saw were hands. And Vereen came through and join us, the field fields to flower, join us. It was like I saw God. <laughs> oh, doodly do. The music to me was the most glorious thing I'd ever heard. Young Prince, well. I wanted to, to be Ethel Merman. Ethel Merman for me was you know, balls to the wall. I mean, it's just... <laughs> if you were on stage with Ethel, you better sing out, Louise, because you're going to have to fight for uh, every moment that you get on that stage. She was louder than I am. Oh, he's a gypsy. I said to Ethel, I never hear you vocalize. She said, I vocalize. Oh, and that was it. That's a vocalization. Ethel was brass. No shit. Just straight out brass. And I loved her for it. She's sitting there chewing her gum, and it's opening night. I said, Ethel, aren't you a bit nervous? And she said, F them. If they were half as good, <laughs> they'd be up here themselves. One time, the director said, well, we're going to try this tonight. She walked down the stage and said, call me Miss Birdseye, but this show is frozen. <laughs> Did you ever hear that one? <laughs> Sing out, Louise. Sandy Meisner really let me have it. He always said, we have Eleonora Duse in the class today, who questions the maestro. I finally quit. I studied with uh, Lee Strasberg uh, at the actor's studio for several, several years. Eva Marie, Anthony, Anthony Franciosa, Steve McQueen was there, um, Marilyn Monroe. She was at the studio, and she was at her best. And she smelled of Life Boy soap. And to this very day, if I smell Life Boy soap, I get an erection. Big movie stars, their mechanism was staying greased and and pliable because they would come back to do scenes at the studio. There are actors who feel that it was destructive to them. Strasberg just raked Joe Sullivan over the coals. Terrible. It was terrible. And I was incensed and I never went back. When I asked Betty Davis, how do you like working with actor studio people? She says, I could be making a movie waiting for them to speak. So. <laughs> I was the standby for Lauren Bacall and the applause. And believe it or not, Lauren Bacall, she fell down in the show. And it was a bad fall. She was dropped and she fell down. So I would say to the stage manager, okay, I'm here. I'm ready to go on. And he said, look, uh, she just said, Gretchen Weiler is not going to do my dance in my show. I mean, it's the classic diva. The first play I was in was with Elizabeth Ashley, and uh, we, enjoyed, we enjoyed each other, and that was fun. And first Broadway opening, we're all going to Sardi's. And of course, that was the ultimate. Sardi's, I'd never been to Sardi's. I'd certainly heard about it. 
I mean, they would cram you all into one table way, way, way at the back. And I, I ordered a big meal. And suddenly his hand is thrust into the, into the table saying, trip. And it was a disaster, a disaster. It just got thoroughly panned. And I sat there like in shock. Now, the moment that happened, people started to exit. See ya, take care, bye bye. Nobody is going to say out loud, it's a turkey, it's a bomb. You know, nobody's going to say that that night at Sardis. But it's one of those things you're supposed to tacitly grasp by the change in the air. This table emptied out, and I was there alone. That's right. Reverend was left at the table with all the food. Oh, God, that's funny. <laughs> I probably shouldn't laugh. I suppose it's that, but it's funny. Doing Chicago. We had so much fun. It's good, isn't it right? I love Broadway so much that the discipline of it, the, what happens on a stage, it is magical. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>